Hi guys, Virginia here and I'm back with a new 12 by 12 process video for today. This one's for confessions of a paper edit cut file and I'm having a go at another one of the uh, International Scrapbook Day challenges that are still up and going in the confessions of a paper edit Facebook group. So um, make sure you pop on over and have a go at um, some of the entries. But I thought I would share this page. I love this one. <laughs> um, I actually started it in a... Um, little live zoom session that we had in the facebook group and um i spent most of the time just kind of chatting and um adding down the um alphas with the thickers onto the page um so i didn't get a lot done so um i kind of um said goodbye to the lovely ladies that joined me and and just kind of continued making it um and decided I would film the rest of it. So this is where we're at. I'm using the bookworm cut file. I love this cut file. <laughs> I've been wanting to use it, so I thought I would use it on this page. And um, I should actually mention the challenge I'm doing. I'm doing the grab five um, uh, challenge. Um, and um, Catherine came up with this uh, challenge, one of our lovely design team members, and she modelled it after the uh, Confessions of Paper Edit um, abbreviated name, we call it uh, Copa Cut Files. So she's chosen C uh, for a cut file, that's number one. Um, o was oxide, so oxide inks, um, or inks if you don't have oxides, or sprays, whatever. Um, then A was alphas, or thickers, I've um, gone with thickers. P was for paper, and um, the next A was acrylic. So um, I've definitely checked off all of those things on the page. So you can take acrylic either way, like acrylic shapes or acrylic paint, or if you don't have either of those, you could just go for wood veneer, um, just for your kind of grab five. So you can see what I've done here. This is what I did on the Zoom session. I grabbed these thickers. Um, I've I've never really been able to use them. They're a really hard one and they've just kind of sat in my stash so I thought they would be my sacrificial lamb for this page. <laughs> and um, I just kind of penciled the outline of where that bookworm cut file was going to sit on my cardstock and then just kind of glued these thickers randomly all over my background um, around the outside of the bookworm. And I love it. It's like all the words or the letters are just coming out of the pages um, and I really really like that idea. So. What I've done is glued them onto my page, and at this point I've done a couple of coats of white acrylic paint. I'm using some Liquitex uh, Heavy Body Acrylic uh, Paint in Titanium White, and this is probably about my my third, yeah, third coat. I'm just touching up because I can still kind of see uh, some of the um, stripes. Um, and the pattern on those thickers coming through. So I just want to make sure that they're completely whited out. And this also acts to um, prime my page. So you can use gesso to prime your page or you could use acrylic paint. Either or either. Priming it is just a, making a barrier between the paper and whatever liquids or mixed media or product that you're going to pop onto it. That's pretty much all it is. So um, this means that I can uh, move and blend uh, the uh, liquids that I pop onto my background um, on top of that acrylic paint. Uh, where it lands on just a plain white cardstock, I can't move it, it's going to soak into the page, but that doesn't matter. Um, any of that will be underneath my cut file so you won't see it. So I'm just going to go around, I didn't actually intend to do rainbow, I was just bringing in bright colours and um, I just thought for sake of blending I put uh, those kind of complementary colours beside each other so that I knew that if they mixed together they weren't going to make brown. Um, so we've gone for yellow which was mustard seed, um, we've got orange there which is might be able to pull it out if we can find it. Um, fossilized amber for the yellow, sorry. And then we go into a spiced marmalade for the orange. The green is mowed lawn. The pink is picked raspberry. And then we go into that purple, which is seedless preserves. And then around to blue, salty ocean. And then peacock feathers is that last kind of um, tealy color that we've got going on okay so just pushing it on my um 
a little piece of packaging, adding some water and kind of smushing it down and then just kind of blending it around so that it, it really seeps in around those crevices of those letters to kind of make them pop off the page. Um, and I really should have, and I didn't think about this because I really, 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 <laughs> R-A-R, <laughs> that's my accent, um, I very rarely uh, use my sprays as actual sprays. Um, and... I should have just brought my oxide sprays out and sprayed them on and I would have got a really rich and intense colour um, straight away but instead I go ahead and do this because this is my natural kind of inclination to just go ahead and do the packaging technique I can kind of control that a little bit more um, but I wasn't getting the depth of colour that I, I wanted um, because I guess when you gesso a page or add uh, acrylic paint underneath it, it tends to mute your colours quite a bit versus when you add it directly onto paper, the colours really retain their vibrancy and their intense uh, pigment. Um, yeah. But anyway, I kind of persevere. I come around for a second time <laughs> with each of those colours and this time I just kind of smush it on my glass mat and then add some with a paintbrush. But again, it's still that colour is still quite, um, lost a lot of its vibrancy and its intenseness. So I still just kind of work my way around adding some really dark patches of the colour. With my mow lawn, adding a couple of little splatters as I go. Uh, onto my picked raspberry. I want to darken that up. It's very light. So just kind of painting within those crevices, all those little thickers. Looking up that mess onto my seedless preserves. And I mean, it's quite nice because the colour kind of fades out quite a bit towards the edge. Um, but still, I would have. I, trying to get it really really vibrant. I'm using the uh, Vicky Booten, uh, the new colour story collection. It just um, quite literally the last of it arrived um, Friday? Yeah the Friday before <laughs> International Scrapbooking Day. I was hoping to have my March Hip Kit Club kit arrive um, but that still hasn't shown up um, which is a shame um, but never mind. Um, I had this to play with and boy did I play with it over the weekend. I love this collection. It is just gorgeous. Um, and I haven't done a haul video. I don't think I will. Um, I got the products from kind of all over the show. I got um, the 12x12 12 12 paper pad and two sticker booklets from a uh, scrapbook stockist in New Zealand. And um, and then I found the 6x8 paper pad at Spotlight. Um, in New Zealand and then I bought the die cut packs and the uh, kind of thicker set um, from scrapbook.com and that was what just arrived on the Friday so um, muddled together a few orders and um, got my hands on it and I'm so glad I did it's just gorgeous okay so I'm bringing out my distress oxide sprays now in the same colors um, and the purpose of this was mainly just to bring in some splatters. I wanted some really ripe, bold splatters. And then I ended up just kind of picking it up and just dropping it on. And, um, and that kind of gave me the satisfaction of that kind of more intense pops of colour by doing that. And I mean, a lot of this gets completely covered up in the end. Um, but it was fun making it. <laughs> okay, so onto my orange. Just adding a bit more of that. And you can see I'm really splattering it down. Just going to town, add a bit more pink, that picked raspberry, and then that's that's it um, for the oxides. I'm going to bring in some gold with my Gunzai Tumbi Starry Colours Water Based Pigment Set, and I'm going for that really kind of ready gold, and funny enough it's called red gold, <laughs> um, so I'm just adding some water and splattering that, and I felt like that gold match the gold that's in uh, this collection. There is some gold foiling. It almost feels like it's probably a little bit holographic. It is a bit holographic gold um, and it's kind of picking up a ready tone so that's why I went for that colour versus a normal gold. Okay so I put my cut file back in place. 
I've backed that with the 6x8 paper pad and you can see I've only had this collection like two days at this stage and I've really hammered <laughs> the 6x8 paper pad so I'm glad I got the 12x12 paper pad as well versus just the single sheet papers and I really love that the 12x12 paper pad has double sided papers because I struggle um, with paper pads sometimes you get a lot where uh, you just don't like the patterns and you feel like you've wasted a whole the, like the whole sheets of paper but this one is if you don't like one side there's always um, an option on the other side that you might like to use as a holder as well so I'm really appreciative that she does the double sided uh, papers okay so there's no thickers behind the center of that cut file so I've just popped a bit of foam in there I've backed my photos with papers from the 6x8 paper pad and they're both of Eddie she's sitting there actually with her iPad and she's got her little notebook there and she's uh, got her ear earphones on and she's hard at it just drawing away um, some cute little images and that's why I felt like this bookworm would go um, go really well with these photos she's kind of hard at work <laughs> with her little notebook um, just doing some drawing um, yeah okay so I've just kind of stacked them together just in that kind of nice little crevice where that uh, the bookworm's little tail or bon bottom <laughs> um, uh, just kind of curved it just they just sat in there really nicely so I'm thinking I want to kind of frame my layout so I like this purple it's um, Kind of works really well with the people that I've chosen to back that book that's in the center of the page and so I feel like it's all just kind of drawing your eye and we've got a really nice purple frame drawing your eye to that purple book which is where my photos are so it's all drawing your eye just kind of into that central part of the page okay I'm gonna gut this pattern paper I love this purple it's gorgeous um, so I don't want to waste it I'm just doing about an inch border cutting it out and then I will keep the inside piece I mean the B side on this is gorgeous as well those blue circles um, but the purple for this rough up my edges and then I end up just placing it on a bit of a um, angle um, on that purple just for a little bit of something something different there we go just a slight angle I quite like that so I'll just go ahead and glue that down and his, um, I just will just point out the the little bookworm's face is looking a little bit weird at the moment. He's just got some glasses and they're just white. But I do add something. Um, I get them out shortly. Um, I think I do them last actually because uh, I don't want to smudge them. But it adds so much to the cut file. Um, I really really love it. Um, but we'll get there shortly. Okay, onto the die cut. So there's two die cut packs in this collection, and there's so many die cut pieces. There's some really big ones. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I feel like because they're so big, you tend to use less of them. So this collection just goes, it's just going to last forever, I think. Um, yeah, really, really fun. So just kind of sifting through. Got some crayons, I thought maybe, but no, I decided not to. I like that title, You Colour My World. I thought that, that was really cool because she was kind of colouring in and we've got all these bright colours. Uh, perfect for this. Um, lots of titles. A little spot for my journaling so I just pop that there it's almost like a little library card so kind of works with those books a little sentiment um, I chose capture it all so I just tuck that on that bottom photo in that empty space and then just kind of continue sifting through my options um, I like the idea of a little butterfly so I've got a little yellow one pop that on the book just for something I did try this paint um, but it was just kind of floating there was nothing really uh, grounding it to the to the layout so that goes um, all those die cuts back in my little bag and um, I'm just having a look through this set see if there's anything I like on there have a look through the 6x12 sticker sheet haven't yet opened this um, there we go some hearts just a purple, a blue, and I bring in an orange down the bottom. And a little holographic butterfly, just to bring another butterfly onto the page. Onto the little sticker uh, sheets. A couple of those little kind of gold holographic circles. I love them. So just kind of scatter them around. Um, a little binder clip 
on that photo and the word create um, on that little tab and we've got a little pink uh, sentiment do your thing <laughs> so I pop that on the book a nice little title for the book and then just another little butterfly so we've got three butterflies going on the page now so we've got a black and white one on that background and um, a couple of little puffy hearts and that's pretty much it for my brushing so I'm gonna go ahead and adhere everything down I'm gonna pop this title up on some foam and just pop that in place and then that's going to give me a really good indication of where everything else needs to go. I'm going to pop glue behind all my little stickers, puffy stickers, because we've got some acrylic paint on that background. And there we go, everything is adhered down. So finishing touches is the glasses on the little bookworm. He's so cute. So I've got some glossy accents. I'm filling in his glasses with the glossy accents. That gonna, that's going to give that kind of glassy uh, shine, like glasses. And then I grab my black Nuvo drops and I fill in the portion where his little pupils are on his eyes. And I think that that absolutely makes this cut file um, in the layout. It's so cute. <laughs> um yeah so the link to the confessions of paper Attic facebook group is in the description box below make sure you pop on over and enter some of the challenges uh, but until next time bye guys